Welcome to Uriah Heap, the Magician's Podcast. I'll be covering every studio song the band has recorded and every bonus track that I can find. Each week we'll go over a new song from the beginning to where they are currently, and as they keep adding albums, I'll keep adding shows. Let the deep dive party begin. In the magic garden, some were singing, some were dancing. Hello and welcome to episode two of season three of Uriah Heap the Magician's Podcast. I am your host, Scott Haskin, here with a fan-based, band-endorsed podcast going song by song all the way to the end of everything they have done in the studio and they're still making albums. So I don't actually know how long this is going to go on because they're still making albums. They're heading into the studio, hopefully in February to record the next one. This will be number 25 and uh, we're only on album three. So we got a ways to go to catch up. The question is, what do I do when the new album comes out? Do I do a departure and time travel into the future, you know, to season 25 and review that album and then go back to wherever we're at when it comes out? Um, I don't know. I don't know how I want to do that yet. It kind of seems like it would be weird to do something that out of place in the timeline. But at the same point, it's like, yeah, this is like fresh, hot stuff, though. We should be talking about it. So I don't know. What do you guys think? I'd love to hear you chime in. Send me an email. Hit me up on Twitter, whatever you want to do. And let's talk about that. I'm, I'd be curious to get your thoughts. I have no idea what I want to do for that yet. Um, I'm really torn on that because I'm very much about, you know, doing things in a chronological order that makes sense, especially for the listeners, because it's like out of place for the, the progression of the band. It almost seems like the show should follow the progression of the band regardless. Um, I really only have the, uh, the capacity to do about four episodes a week. If I could do 50 a week, we'd be there in, in no time, but uh, I can't do that. So, um, yeah, yeah. You know what? Just, uh, send me your thoughts. I'd be curious to hear what you have to say. You can reach me at the website, uh, through the email at Uriah, Uriah, Uriah. I'm from the South all of a sudden. Uriah Heat Podcast at gmail.com. You can write me there or you can find me on Facebook at facebook.com Uriah Heap Podcast. If you just search Uriah Heap, uh, their logo comes up first, the main band site. And I think this one is second. And then there's like the fan clubs and stuff after that. Um, you can also uh, reach out to, to uh, the show on Twitter at Heap Podcast or Instagram at Uriah Heap Podcast. We're everywhere. And um, I answer all those. So when you, you know, when you reach out, you're getting me. I don't know if that makes you happy or not, but that's what you get. So if you don't reach out, maybe that's why. I don't know. I don't know. That's up to you guys. So it is the uh, the first episode of the new week. We are now into the the second song of the Look at Yourself album, and uh, this is this is the last album with uh, with Paul Newton, and we have drummer Ian Clark for just this one album only, and uh, then there's a, another split, and then new members come in and uh, stay together for a little while. Uh, you know, they build a, a little bit bigger of a foundation for the band, having a stable lineup. But this album has got some great players on it. I mean, you know, there's no um, there's no underlying sound to what Paul Newton has given to the band uh, through this album. And really, I think, shaping the future because the the kind of style that he developed for the bass of Uriah Heap, I think, really helped um, personally, I think, really helped the the future bass players of the band kind of carry that feeling on. And um, just my opinion, but I, I definitely think that there is some... Uh, some of that in Gary Thane's playing, especially uh, as you hear them go forward, the the style that he writes with. And that may be Gary Thane's stuff. I only know his work from Uriah Heep, so I can't really say. And what he did in another band isn't necessarily what he would do with this band. But that being said, um, I definitely think that Paul laid his mark on on the sound of the band for uh, for generations to come. And, uh, you know, Ian Clark, this is the only album that he did with the band, but I really like his playing. Um, I really like the way that he played on Look at, uh, the song Look at Yourself. And um, I really like the layering of the drums on there. But uh, yeah, it's the only album with him. So uh, I don't really know much about the band politics, why things happened the way they did. I know some, but, but very little. Um, don't know what happened with uh, with Ian, but this is the only album he appears on. And then uh, the next album, Demons and Wizards is uh, the beginning of Lee Kerslake's very, very long career with Uriah Heep. So we'll get to all of that when it's time to get to all of that. In the meantime, it's the first show of the week, and we have some people to thank. 
I want to start off with our two amazing patrons that have uh, that have donated money to the show each month since they signed up at the three dollar tier. Peter Voss, thank you so much, Peter. And at the one dollar tier, the unbreachable airtight gravesite. And I have so many questions about that. If you're wanting to keep your grave airtight so that you don't decompose as quickly, um. As soon as somebody goes in there or looks to see how your decomposition is coming along, like it's over because they're going to have to breach that seal. So is it worth it? That's the question. Is it worth it? But you're a patron and thank you very much. Uh, thank you both very much. That that means a lot to me. Um, I know I said that we're going to start unlocking some of those features when we get to 10 patrons on the Patreon, which you can find at the bottom of the website, scotthaskin.com slash Heat podcast. Uh, but you know, I'll, I'll, you know, if it goes on too long and we don't have any additional patrons then I'll do something special for you guys, but thank you very much. It's, it's deeply appreciated. And there are some other people that have contributed to the show, uh, in their own ways, which I greatly appreciate. Uh, my good friend, Scott Lazinski that I've known since 11th grade, no, the end of 10th grade. I want to say, I can't remember. Yeah, I think it was the end of 10th grade when we met. So you're talking uh, very many years ago. And he is a fantastic graphic artist. I reached out to him to uh, do the logo for the show, and he did a great job for that. Uh, my good friends over at Audionamics, who I just, you know, I've said it, I say it every week, I will not do a podcast, either show or any other show that I am recording. I will not do a show without them. In fact, when I work, uh, when I'm a guest on other podcasts and they have me capture my own audio, I still process it through uh, the instant dialogue cleaner that Audionamics has. And it's a, it's a great product. It takes out the computer fan, um, the airplanes, because I live right by the airport and I'm right next to the incoming and sometimes outgoing flight path. So uh, there's a lot of noise here. And this, you know, you can't hear any of that. It, it's all taken out by this wonderful little, very easy to use product called IDC or instant dialogue cleaner. So thank you, Audionamics, for that. Uh, you know, of course, uh, my my friends who have been so kind to uh, take me in and give me so much support over at the Deep Dive Podcast Network, um, Nate and John at the Deep Purple Podcast, The Simple Man at Skinnered Reconsidered, Terry T-Bone Mathley at T-Bone's Prime Cuts, whose new show is coming soon, and I cannot wait. And we also have Rye at Sabbath Bloody Podcast, who has done all of the music of Black Sabbath. I'm just getting started, really, on your Rye Heap. You know, I'm just just getting like the third shovel full here. And he's already done with all of the Black Sabbath music. And he's moved on to all of Ozzy Osbourne's uh, stuff, which there's quite a bit to get through there. So uh, maybe by the time he's done with that, we'll be caught up to where Uriah Heap is. I have no idea. I don't know what the numbers are. And last but not least, Paul, Joe and David at the Lap of the Pods, the Queen podcast. And, you know, if you really want to get into some really cool concert history, there are some amazing posts about uh, just about every show over at gottahearemall.com. And uh, my friend Allegra over there just does an amazing job capturing the, the live histories of the bands Deep Purple and Emerson, Lake and Palmer slash Emerson, Lake and Powell. And of course, uh, you know, Uriah Heap's manager, the manager of Thin Lizzy Ace has his own show, Ace on Music. Uh, you can catch, her on, catch it on Stitcher and some of the... I, I, I think some of the episodes go to YouTube. I'm not sure they all do. I had the same problem with Podbean, like sometimes it uploads there and sometimes it doesn't. Um, but all the episodes I know are on Stitcher. And uh, so go check that out. He has a very informative podcast on uh, what's happening in the music world, especially with stuff going on right now. He has a huge and vast, colorful history of music experience. And, uh, and, and he just, you know, he, he brings that out in every episode along with his co-host. It's a really cool and enjoyable show to listen to. And he's got a much better voice than I do. It's a little bit deeper. Uh, it's a little bit more uh, boisterous. I sound kind of thin. I have to EQ my voice a little bit to uh, make it sound strong. But I don't speak that much. So I don't have the strongest vocal cords in the world. And, you know, if I actually had stuff to say other than when I was on the podcast, I probably would. But I, I very rarely don't. You know, the art speaks for me and, and that's all that really matters. So th thank you all for the support that you've given the show in your own ways. I, I deeply appreciate that. And uh, thank you guys for those of you who have left ratings. We have all five star ratings so far, which is really nice. Uh, I didn't check it before I just started recording now. But the last time I checked it, we were still at seven. Uh, thank you, guys. That means a lot that you're enjoying the show. I appreciate all the letters that continue to come in from people telling me their experience with Uriah Heap, how long they've been a fan, 
what the first album was that they heard, what the song was that kind of ensnared them into finding out more about the band's music. And it's really cool because when I go on to the, um, you know, the Facebook fan built site, I see so much support for the band. So many people on a daily basis, really on an hourly basis are posting, hey, this song was in my head, or here's a song that you guys might want to enjoy right now. And there's just such a, a powerful element of support from the fan base of this band that I really, you know, the couple other bands forums that I belong to, I really don't see that there. I see people post and I see them, you know, share articles and interviews and stuff. But there's just something really special about Uriah Heap fans or Heapsters, as I've been uh, been made aware of that, that uh, we're all called. Either way, we all share that common bond that we love the music. There's probably other similar bands out there. Well, I mean, there's really no similar bands to Uriah Heap, but maybe from that time period when when music was made, you know, without the aid of computers and all of that, when it had to be played out of skill and not that every little thing could be corrected because they certainly did not have the time and the the resources to pay the studios for that time to be perfecting every little thing in a song that that's, you know, that's not perfect, which is why you'll hear a stick click every now and then. But I like that. I like the fact that it's natural and it's played by human beings and it feels like it was played by human beings and not everything is 100% uh, right on the beat. I, I really like the fact that the music is more alive than that. And uh, and the fact that Heap has just consistently found some amazing people to be in the band. Um, it's It's no wonder this band is so magical to all of us. So thank you for letting me share in the joy of that with you guys. Thank you to all of you that have written in and continue to write in or comment on the post. Uh, I hope I'm seeing them all. Um, you know, it goes out to so many different platforms and everything. I, I don't know for sure that I am. But uh, if, if I have, uh, you've seen me respond. And if I haven't, thank you very much. Uh, it's, it's deeply appreciated the, the love that we all share for this music and, and the people that made it. So without further ado, it's time to get into the song. Let's just do it. Great, powerful beginning, especially coming off that uh, crazy ending from Look at Yourself, uh, showing that, hey, the album is still rock and roll. It's, uh, it's still going to have a hard edge to it. Um, just, you know, great unity from all the musicians. But what I notice here, as opposed to what I said on Look at Yourself, the, uh, the toms have actually some, some uh, tonality and depth to them on this one. And I didn't really feel that on Look at Yourself, that really shined through. But right off the bat, I like the drum sound much better on this one. I don't know why it would be different unless it was recorded on a different day uh, or they just EQ'd it differently for um, for this song or for that song. But in any case, yeah, it's got a great start to it. And uh, let's see where it goes. As I wake up every day with no new songs to play Feeling like I ought to pack my bag and run My imagination flies To some other sunny skies Where I felt so good and everything was done And my time was my So I'm going to take a guess here. I don't have any documentation on it, um, nothing that I found, but I, I, I'm going to say this might be Ken and David singing together. I'm pretty sure I hear each of their tonalities because um, Ken is a little bit more nasally than David is, and I'm pretty sure I'm hearing both of them in there. I could be wrong. It could be one of them double tracking everything, but I think it's both of them. Um, I really like what's going on here because you have the, uh, you know, the small hand percussion is really, really moving this forward. You've got the six on the hi-hat, but you've got the shaker, you got a little tambourine in there. And that's great because the music is so light. It's not that, you know, full sound that you come to expect. Even when it's just keyboards, it's usually heavier than this. Just, you know, high register on the keyboard and uh, just some really nice tones coming from Ken. But all this other stuff really keeps the song in motion along with the vocals because the vocals are pretty straightforward. Um, there's not a lot of pitch going on. And uh, and it's nice to have this movement. And then you've got uh, Paul Newton coming in on the bass. And I really like what he's playing here. He's not sticking to, you know, just bass notes. He's really exploring 
the the note field of what he can do here. And uh, it, it's great. It's really part of that sound that I've gotten so used to hearing from them um, because the, the they don't have bass players that just play the root notes. They have bass players that play uh, more melodically and uh, kind of enhance the rhythm that's that's coming from the drummer as well. So um, interesting stuff so far. But uh, yeah, I like the feel of the song. So, of course, there we have uh, more of the musicians coming in to join the fun to uh, to drive the song on. The uh, keyboards get a little bit thicker. We've got the heavy guitar that comes in. Love those little, um, I don't know what the technical term would be, if, but I think it's it's not it's not shimmers. I guess it's really more tremolo, the, the way that the, uh, the notes sound with, uh, you know, with the um, crybaby pedal. Uh, just that wow, 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 wow. So maybe it's a little bit of delay. I'm not sure exactly what uh, he has to to pull that together. But I love the sound of that. And that is something that also is is part of the signature of Uriah Heap sound. Uh, very, very cool trick. Uh, but it, And it's nice because you can uh, minimize what you're playing a little bit and have that sound carry out and fill up the spaces. So if this was a song that you were doing live, uh, you would be able to rest a little bit more, maybe use this song as one uh, in between some of the heavier songs that you could kind of let yourself rest a little bit, even though you know you're going to be playing all through the night. And this allows you, uh, you know, a little bit of a break to uh, to have some of that background or the, the uh, electronics fill in some of that. But uh, very cool. I love the sound of it. Um, love where it's going. The energy's great. And uh, what a wonderful vocal. You know, you can never underestimate or uh, never... Um, what's the right word? I'm really at a loss today, aren't I? Never uh, undervalue what the vocals are doing for a song. And um, I think they uh, they really, really bring a lot to this. It feels almost like um, feels like he's reading a poem more so than singing a lyric in this one. To me, it's very straightforward kind of stanza like uh, delivery, but uh, very cool nonetheless. I really like that part. Um, it's it's nothing too flashy or over the top. It's really just kind of carrying on the song with uh, with the general melody of it done in that heavy guitar fashion. But it sounds just so fantastic. I like it sometimes when it's just simple and uh, and straightforward. It's really nice. And then of course you've got that powerful vocal and the harmony that we've all become accustomed to in uh, you know the the signature of Uriah Heep's sound sounds great here. Um, I really love the the way that they just you know, travel from note to note, very powerful. They don't lose anything going higher up, going lower, uh, just, just nice and solid and rich and full the whole time, which that's hard to pull off. It really is, but they do such a masterful job of it. Our 
Well, that last part was a nice little jam from Paul on bass there, switching to the eighth notes. And um, I really like those pitches too. Very nice. And uh, also, you know, I have to take back part of what I said about the drum sound because while they've cleaned up the toms, the bass drum, I think, leaves a little bit to desire. There's some really nice bass work in that verse, uh, bass drum work, I should say, in that verse. But it's uh, it's really kind of hard to hear. It's more, um, you just hear like the push of it and not really the the pitch or, or the punchiness of it. Um, but it's pretty neat what he's playing, just the same. Something I probably wouldn't have expected on a song of this tempo. And, you know, the, the vocals, I kind of figured out what they remind me of. It's kind of a song that you would sing in around a campfire, on a bus. Um, it just has that cadence to it that's, uh, that's like one of those old school songs that you would just sing to kind of pass the time. And I'm not talking about this song particularly. I just mean the cadence of the vocal, the, you know, where it goes up in pitch, but it's mostly flat, uh, just flat the same without a lot of variation. There's no crazy high vocals in the verse. And that just that kind of feel, that rhythmic pattern of the vocal uh, just reminds me of those, those days on field trips or, or whatever uh, in, in, uh, in school. But uh, that's not speaking to the quality of the song. Of course, the, the song is great. Um, just, just specifically talking about like that sort of lyrical pattern and the fact that there aren't a lot of pitch changes in that. Um, that's just what it reminds me of. I'm sure you all have different experiences out there. But it's very strong. And even though um, there's not a whole lot happening musically, there's not a lot of tangents and things like that. It's very straightforward, but it just sounds so thick and powerful. Um, Paul and Mick are locked in so tight together that it just, the bass really strengthens the sound of the lead guitar and, uh, and, it, and it makes Mick's sound much bigger than it actually is because they're so tight together on this one. But it's a really cool piece. It's got such a great groove to it and, uh, and strong vocal. Um, how can you go wrong with a song like this? That's another thing I really love about these guys is that they they have the ability to do these progressions, but they do them at really interesting and different intervals than what your brain is anticipating the next one's going to be. And that certainly keeps interesting. And then you've got such a passionate, powerful vocal. Um, that does sound like it's David Byron right there. I don't think anybody's doubling that. Um, just very powerful right up until the end. And um, the heart and soul that goes into this, I can tell you anyone who's been in a recording studio or done any kind of studio recording, the environments can be really sterile sometimes, and I find uh, it pretty amazing anytime anyone's able to pull off something with this level of passion and and power because they're very, it's not that they're stifling environments, it's more like um, they're just not inspiring environments. You know, studios are very padded and very dry, and um, you know, even the feeling that you get walking into a, a recording booth or a studio room is different because they do everything that they can to deaden the air. So when you walk in, it kind of feels a little bit disorienting sometimes, depending on how how much acoustic treatment they've given it. Sometimes it's a little overkill and it's, um, you know, it, it can uh, throw your mind for a bit of a loop. But it's uh, it's amazing when a band can pull off something of this caliber caliber, considering that environment on top of just all the regular recording pressure. So great job on another great song. Uh, I really like this. It's uh, it just has such a great feeling from that poetic verse and the powerful notes to you know, to this crazy screaming ending and, and all the passion in the song. It's it's really a journey and uh, really a joy to listen to, to these because there is so much on what might be just considered an album, album track or a throwaway track or filler. You would think that there would be some of that, but right off the bat, you've got two songs that are just, you know, they're powerful. They're coming out of the gate, ready to go. And I love this song. I love it. I love the thickness of the guitar tone. 
uh, just everything on it is fantastic and everything hits the marks for me. I don't know. What do you guys think? I didn't pause expecting an answer. I paused to take a sip of tea. But yeah, great song. Great song. Second song on the album. And we'll be back tomorrow with uh, July Morning, which is another fan favorite. Uh, one I certainly love. I have a little tiny Ken Hensley story to go with that that I'll tell you guys tomorrow. But uh, yeah, fun song. Two for two on the album as far as I'm concerned. Way to go. Look at yourself. And way to go, Uriah Heap. We'll see you guys tomorrow for the next episode of Uriah Heap, the Magician's Podcast. Thank you for joining me on this episode of Uriah Heap, the Magician's Podcast. If you have enjoyed this show, please consider going over to Apple Podcasts or your favorite podcast outlet, leaving a rating or a review. Be sure to subscribe to make sure that you are notified when new episodes are available. Please be sure to share this podcast with your fellow Uriah Heap enthusiasts and anyone who you think would like Uriah Heap, which should be everyone. And if you are so inclined, please feel free to contribute to the Patreon account. And if you are not a Patreon subscriber, you can also pay through the PayPal link on the website listed in the show links below. I would also like to thank Uriah Heap for their very generous support of the show. And thank you guys for listening. We'll see you in the next episode. Happy days.